Oh my goodness, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. I don't remember what happened last time. I think I'm gonna hit a recap on this one. Oh my, how the tables have turned. You mean how the chessboard has spun? Oh! <laughs> I believe this is you. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, before we go in, let's have that recap. Yeah, let's have that what recap. What was about? Oh, we even staged an introduction we and had, forgot what the introduction was about. It wasn't was staged, what? it was all yeah, original it wasn't staged, and, guys. and improv. It wasn't staged. 5%. <laughs> it was a great plan. Anyway, why don't you give me a recap, because so, you know everything. Okay, so what happened is, Tell me. first of all, everyone is dead. Okay. This is... I, I know dead. that's tough on you. Everyone is dead? Everyone is dead. Well, only six people, were, or seven people, wait. Well... It's a great question. The question is, is does- Vigilia died. And Kurosawa died, so... You're getting ahead of yourself here. <laughs> I'm taking this back to episode one. Oh, okay. Okay, sure. So everyone died. Everyone died. And then everyone died again. Yes. And then now six people have died. Okay. Just so we're clear. I follow you. Alright? Okay, good. So, what happened in episode two was Bala was like, But- But it- You can't- But not the servants. It has to be one of these people, but these people are my family, so it has to be the servants. Yeah. So what- Dear Beatrice, Beatrice has done this time. A wonderful lady. Has killed all of the servants in Kinzo. Mm hmm And the gate. red truth that they are dead. Mm hmm So RIP that. Yeah. And she said that there are only 18 people on the island. 18 humans this is on true. the island. This is true. 18 humans. Now, on this Rakenjima. On this Rakenjima. Let's be very clear. Also red truth that there is another mansion on the island. Yes. Across called Kuwadorian. Kuwadorian. Which uh, had some fancy meaning, but I don't remember what it was. It's something about nine birds. <laughs> That's right. And we were theorizing who the nine birds were. Or was it six I, birds? I don't remember. I, I don't remember. Nine. I don't remember it the might quantity have been of seven. birds. The point is, there were birds. There were birds. There were birds. Definitely. Certainly. I might say. There were certainly birds. Yeah, there were certainly birds. Certainly birds. wonder what that could be a reference to. Oh, uh, Honda's having a ball. All right. Yeah, but basically, okay. so what we just had was we had a massive witch fight that m didn't happen. Vigilia mm -hmm. won, but then didn't win because yep. Beatrice is like, nup, endless You're dead. power. Mm -hmm. Well, d weren't you paying attention? There were two shoulder towers, but there were actually four shoulder towers. Exactly. And the two other shoulder towers shot v Vigilia because she got her name after the fight, though. So technically, I guess she's just predecessor Beatrice at that point. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, she she died. But yeah, but didn't so realize she died, it. and then uh, there was, you know. Battler went for a walk and he's like, oh god, what's happened? Yeah, and then- And then <laughs> Vigilia showed up and was like, I'm gonna explain how televisions work. Yeah, it's great. Brawn tubes, guys. Look them up. They're- they're interesting. They're filled with tiny gnomes. Yeah, and I then- hear. And then we went back, we saw four guns this time. Yep. Four guns. Uh, and then we had another purgatory scene where Battler just- Destroyed Beatrice yeah. with Vigilia's help. With, with the help of Vigilia, Battler really like owned that scene. He almost made Beatrice say something important, but then Rodave had to like pull her away. Which, which by was the way, very interesting. So good. I Rodeve, love that. I love him. Rodave is very quickly becoming my favorite character. Hashtag Rodave. Right. <laughs> I am. I am so on board with this. Yeah. He can cook. He can make tea. He can pull you back before you do anything stupid. Oh, it's great. He is just the love boat we all needed. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, what else do we have to, like, recap on before we continue? The music's great. The music is indeed um, fantastic. And Vigilia, like... We did like, hear a couple of new tracks as well. Yep, Dancing Pipe. Well, I mean, technically it's not new, but this was, like, its debut, like, its big scene. I, when I think of Dancing Pipe, I think of the the six-chain murder room. Yeah, um, I mean... I want to be very clear. I know that I was like, Dancing Pipe! And you were like, we've heard that, like, three times already, but that's no, the No, 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 what I said is that you've said that we've heard it three times already. I think we have heard it once before this and episode, but there the is point a comment is, on YouTube right now that is, that's not Dancing Pipe, I know. man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the point is, this is the scene that Dancing... Well, that was the scene where Dancing Pipe is, like, fucking mint. It's Vigilia going through the six rooms. Oh, I love it. It was pretty fantastic. Um, let me think if there's anything else we want to talk about. Uh, you didn't really mention the fact that the, the Beatrice is like chained in flesh by Kinzo, but I don't know if you want to comment on that right now. Wait. I want to know. Oh, right. There was that whole thing yeah, yeah. In, the, in the other mansion. I mean, I was talking about like our immediate recap. This is true. I mean, so, if we want to go back and cover like all of the things with Rose, <laughs> Rosa going into the forest and Beatrice yeah. falling off a cliff. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, she fell down, because she was wearing a big dumb dress. That's right. Which is beautiful, but, you know, if she can't fly as a witch, then, like, walking's hard. <laughs> walking's hard with that big dress. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm certainly well acquainted in walking with big dresses. Yeah, same. Alright, then. 
Before we continue, I want to know. I'm just dropping that there. We're moving on. I want to know <laughs> if there's anything you wanted to to pacificate, anything you wanted to to theorize on before we continue. I'm sure we've had discussions since. I don't remember any of them, but we've had discussions about some things. Is there anything you want to bring up right now to talk about? So yeah, things I want to talk about. I think the main thing that I'm intrigued by at the moment, uh, other than the sheer amount of time we are spending in the tea party space, mm -hmm. the other thing which I pointed out to you off screen a bit, uh, is Battler's kind of winning. Yeah. Like, the thing is, at this point, because Battler has kind of clued into the whole thing that it's an unreliable narrator, and that what he's being shown that's magic is just a load of shit, mm -hmm. uh, as long as he can prove otherwise. Mm -hmm. The thing is, unless we actually get something that is definitely impossible, which I don't think will happen, at least yet, okay. it mm -hmm. seems like Battler's kind of... he's in a position to win now. And my subsequent thought on that is where do we go if Beatrice can't make any more moves that'll actually stump him? Because we think that none of this is impossible? What, do you have a solution for everything? Or is it just your gut telling you that it's... The thing is... What do you think? Like... I don't know. I feel like, as I've said several times through the playthrough, I kind of don't want a magic is real ending to happen. Sure. At least if the premise maintains that it's about the murder mystery. Okay. If the premise changes, sure. But at the moment, we're still stuck with, is is magic real? Who is the culprit in episode one? Right. If that changes, sure. Sure. But at the moment, what I'm thinking is, is that basically, we're going to have to change what we're actually looking at. Mm-hmm. So, my thought is... By the end of this episode, or... Because basically, the thing I'm keeping in mind is that parts 1 to 4 are released as one story, parts 5 to 8 are released as another story. Yeah. So this kind of has to conclude in some way that would make sense for it to be split up that way. Okay. Um, so what I'm thinking is, is that episode 4 is going to round out 1 to 3 somehow. And what I've proposed to you is that we're going to get some kind of, like, reflection on the truths of the matter. Okay. Because the other thing is, if we assume that episode one had an unreliable narrator, it means that a whole bunch of the things that I've been basing my theories off may not have happened, and what we might get in episode four, or later this episode, mm. is uh, basically like... Like confirmation one way or the other? Confirmation of yeah. what scenes actually happened. Sure. You think that there might be some way of telling... I mean, what your theory right now is that anything the battler isn't in is, like, unreliable. For the um, most part. I, but we, the, do, we have seen... Like, there, there was the of slip scenes, up at the end um, of episode two. Yeah. But that was after he'd given in. Cool. So, to my mind, at that point, rules are off. Sure. When he's like, I okay. accept it, it doesn't matter anymore. Okay. But then the fact that we've now come back to the question actually being questionable like is magic real you know if he'd given in Beatrice would have just won that would have just been it right yeah sure you think so so you know I'm sticking with sticking with my guns and magic isn't real at least for now okay because we haven't seen at least I haven't seen any necessity for a premise change I can see yeah. opportunities for one um like so I, I'm being kind of quiet here I'm not really like trying to rebut you right now but I do want to pick your brain a little bit about sure. episode two's ending, because you say that when Battler gave up, that oh, that was when he you know started seeing things that may or may not be reliable. Yeah. Do you have? Because he kind of gives up. Like he gives up initially at the end of the second Twilight. Yeah. Like, he says, "I give up on this puzzle." Do you think that that's when things start to get unreliable from his point of view, or do you think that happens later when he starts sobbing to Maria, um, or even later, like when he walks into the room, like? What are okay. your thoughts? Do you uh, think there's some kind of some rules? Honestly, or I'd have to go back and look over it again. Sure. Because basically, I know there was like I give up on this puzzle, I can't solve it. Yeah. But I don't recall if he said that witches were true at that point. 
I don't know. I'm fairly no. certain he did. He later. just said he didn't want to suspect the, the yeah. servants. He didn't want to suspect. So Goda I think and it was Kamsala. once once he was actually like witches are real. That was when. So that, are if off. memory serves, that was once it was Rosa, Maria, and Battler alone after they'd sent all the servants and and George out. I think out. so. That was when he he like knelt down and was like, Maria, I give up. Witches are real. Yeah, I'm pretty so sure do you that think was that it. That's the cutoff point. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, because I definitely think that that's something to pick at. If we are taking, like, if we're definitively taking the no magic solution, then something has to be up with episode two's ending, because, uh, Battler just walks in, and Beatrice is there, and then there's the goat party, and all that nonsense. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think that figuring out exactly when, when, when we, we change from what's real into what's not real, I think that's an interesting, uh, to figure out exactly when that is, I think is important. Yeah. It might be worth thinking about. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I want to bring up, because I definitely, I like your thinking that we're going to have to have some kind of significant change, um, by the end of episode four. I think that that's like a really good, uh, thought pattern, I guess. Yeah, I think my current, my current this. theory, which is a bit of a stretch because I don't really have anything to base it off other than episode, a uh, throwaway line in episode one. Sure. Is the fact that Angie is a character. Sure. Right? I like it. I like that you're okay. just so up on Angie. You're like, because, she okay. has a name. She must be he, important. Here's the thing. Okay. Is that Angie and the Kuabata, right? He yep. was the pilot in episode one. Yes. But when I mentioned him when I was editing, you were like, wasn't he a boat guy? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm on to you. <laughs> so I might have I slipped reckon, up slightly on Kuabata. But, I reckon... Uh, Something is up with those two characters. Sure, if you think like, so. I was already suspicious when I saw it, but like <laughs> that took me over the edge. So I reckon one or both of those two characters, because I think they're the only named characters other than the two extra servants. Yep. Uh, Rin Rinon and... Lunon? Lunon, I think. I think so. I think so, yeah. Other than those two, so we have four named characters outside the main story. Sure. Right? One of them's going to come into play, and I feel like the one that would make most sense is going to be Angie. Sure. And I feel like the fact that the pilot of a plane got a name drop Okay. in a story like this tells me that that's going to have something to do with that. And the fact that you said that it's going to have something to do with a boat, <laughs> which, like, I'm sorry, Ben, you slipped up. No, this is fun. You I'm slipped enjoying up. this. I'm liking watching you he... try to figure this out. Okay, he's going to rock up on a boat, Angie's going to be there, and then it's going to be like, what actually just happened. <laughs> that's what- sure. That's what's gonna happen. Sure. Right? Uh, if we get to episode four and this is the case, I'm a fucking flip a table. But that's <laughs> the theory right now. It's a fun theory. I like it a lot. I like that- Because I've definitely been watching you and, and some of your theories have been on the money, some of them have been really wildly out there, which is great. And I love- I love the fact that your theory right now is so far away from what's happening currently that I can't tell you either way. Because- okay, um, but here's the thing, is that's why I'm like on this theory. Sure. Because it, in editing, it was just so strange seeing, like, these specific names when, like, even when we had a scene with um, Rudolph's business partners, they mm. didn't appear on screen, they didn't have their names from, even though he was addressing them, like, directly. Though, to be fair, neither um, Angie nor Kuwabata have a sprite. Yes. So, uh, sure, sure. But That's it's fair. more than names. This is true. Like, the whole thing is, we got, like, in the witch fight, it was like, in episode one, I was like, raining spears... That's it. That's going to be a thing. <laughs> and then it rains spears. It totally happened. It's great. Like, it makes you wonder how much of what Rikishi is writing is planned and how much of it's like, oh, look at that funny line from a couple episodes ago. I'm going to use that literally like, now. Yeah, here's the thing. Right? I, know, I know when I am writing stuff, it's yeah. the latter. It's like, oh, here's a thing that I could make tie in. Totally. Um, but I don't know. At, at the same time, regardless of the thought process, the result is the same. Sure. Like, even if they would just throw away names when he wrote them, He's still could probably going to have looked back and been like, I can use that. Sure. I can either confirm or deny the involvement of Angie or Kuobato or the two servants. Yeah, because I was story, like, of course. I was thinking, like, basically how we are going to wrap up this episode and how the perspective on the story is going to change. Mm. Because I don't think this is sustainable, okay. the way that the purgatory is, like, playing out right now. Okay. So something's got to change, and I feel like we're going to have to look back on the story. Hmm to wrap up part, like, episodes one to four. Mm. And purely on a throwaway line, 
because I'm just like, you know, I'm gonna make a theory on this one. <laughs> no, I like it. I like the theory crafting. Ugh. I think it's really good that you're taking minute details and be like, what if? Well, we're 20 minutes <laughs> in and we haven't even started the episode, so no, that was welcome. Welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome everyone. Back. We'll put a little annotation like, this is where the episode yeah, actually this is, starts. <laughs> this is when we um, stop being dumb. There is one thing that I also want to mention. I know that we said we're gonna start, but I do want to mention. Yeah. There are four guns in there this are episode. Four guns. There are four adults with four guns. We've only ever seen more than, I think, one gun at a time yeah, in the I previous mean, episodes. That was What's one of the other on things that? I wanted to talk about, but we're yes. kind of like in the middle of that right now. I know so. we are, but I just want to know, do you think those guns existed in the previous episodes? Um... I you have that chapel theory about the chapel not existing um, in episode one. I, I don't know if you have a similar theory for the guns. I or, think that... There was at least not access to them in episode one. Okay. Because I feel like there would have been a line that kind of like hinted at it in episode sure. one, but in the middle of editing, which is where we are right now. They did mention Kizzo's gun it. collection. That yeah, is a there thing was that a collection, so there's still room um, for it to have happened. Sure. But we have, as far as I can tell, four identical gun guns. Sure. Which, as I mean, it could just be that the sprites are using the same... That is also it. true, but I mean, <laughs> this is a murder mystery, right? This we can't true. give up that easily on the details. Oh. Um, but it's like, unless there is a specific reason to have four of the same model in a collection, mm. there's still enough room in the story for it to have happened, but I don't think these four guns, at least, were kind of in the okay. first episode. Cool. Okay. I like that theory. The only thing is, is that Natsuhi did die to a gunshot at the end. This is true. Which made it seem like she killed herself. Well, her gun was smoking, right? Yeah. So we assume that's what happened. I don't know. Battler wasn't in the room, so we can't. Well, yeah. So as, as I'm saying, like, there is still room for it to happen in the story, but I don't think these four guns necessarily exist. Maybe another set of guns, because as you say, collection. Hmm. Anyway, All right. when so being besieged, <laughs> your true enemy isn't so much the fear of an unseen culprit as it is keeping such fears alive for long periods of time. Maria got bored and started complaining that she wanted to watch TV. There was no TV in the lobby, so she decided to return to the cousin's room on the second floor. The adults probably wanted to make sure Maria wasn't left on her own. They told all the children to go to the second floor cousin's room so that they could discuss murdering each other downstairs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, definitely. <laughs> Oh my god. George, who was grief stricken by the loss of his fiancee, led the cousins up to the second floor without any resistance. At first, Nigel had been reading a book in the lobby, but when he noticed the relatives looking like they wanted to discuss something sinister, he said, It seems I'm in the way, and returned to his room on the second floor. This is already just cranking on my suspicion meter. They're splitting up. This is great. That, well, not only are they splitting up, but they're leaving the four people with guns in a room to discuss something. I don't let's like just, that. Let's talk about how I we murdered the- I don't like that! Well, I mean, if the six servants are dead, or the five <laughs> servants are Kinzo, who does that leave to be the culprit? Right? Oh my god. What is even happening? Oh shit. Oh my goodness, I've waited for this. <clears throat> I'm starving. And if we just keep sitting around, we'll get sleepy too. It's only natural. We didn't get any sleep at all last night. You'll probably end up being barricaded here for a full 24 hours. It may be wiser to take naps in turn instead of overstressing ourselves. Two. My husband and I will remain here. So I ask that anyone having trouble staying awake take it easy and rest. Our opponent might be expecting that, right? Even if they couldn't defeat this many people. If that number shrinks enough, they may plan to use that moment to strike. There are seven of us here, so we could take three hour shifts in pairs. Tomorrow morning's a long way off. We still have some energy now, but tonight's going to be tough. Sure will. Anyone sleepy? Don't overdo it, and get some rest. <laughs> <laughs> get some rest, take a dirt nap. Hideyoshi looked around at everyone to see who wanted to sleep first and get murdered in their sleep, but no one volunteered. Everyone was just as tired, but no one was bold enough to go to sleep right away. See? That's what I was talking about. Their fear of the unknown culprit was just as strong as their sleepiness. Nobody? Well, don't overdo it, everyone. If we get tired, we'll deal with it then. I'll admit I'm sleepy, but not in the mood now. As Eva spoke sharply, she reread the second letter from Beatrice, which had been found in the boiler room. The second one was the one that's like, Hey, actually, like, the epitaph, please. Read the epitaph, nerds. Do it. 
Beatrice had sent them two letters, which had repeatedly told them to solve the riddle of the epitaph, as we were just saying. And she'd even provoked them- We're really them. good at this. Yeah. <laughs> she'd even provoked them by saying she'd give up her assets and the headship if they could solve it. Ava took out a notebook and opened it to a page with the epitaph copied onto it. Is this an epitaph? Yes. I hate doing what culprit says, but we do have time to waste. I think it's the perfect way to stave off boredom. Not a bad way to kill time. Why don't we challenge it together as siblings? Can I borrow that? I'll rewrite it just a little larger. Nazi san do you have a slightly larger piece of paper? There should be paper in the servant room. I will bring some. Nazi immediately brought a blank B4 sheet of paper from the servant room. That's a size format I have not seen in a long it, time. It sounds convenient. Convenient. Ugh. I'm okay. <laughs> Kyrie borrowed Ava's notebook, read out the epitaph on the paper, and laid it out on the table. Then, everyone quickly peered down at it. They automatically formed a crowd. I've heard about it, but really, this is a tough riddle. Right? Yeah, it's pretty tough. I ain't been able to solve it in my 20 or 50 years of being here. I don't have a clue what it's talking about. 20 or 50? 20 or 50. At one point, I also did my best to solve it, but I was just as clueless. If you did, no, you wouldn't have come all the way out here with a plan to make money. After all, it's ten tons of gold we're talking about. Are we going to have another scene where we discuss mathematically how Let's much Let's talk about worth? how much that is. This is the first time I've read through it seriously, but roughly speaking, couldn't it be split into three parts? <laughs> I've been thinking... I... Sorry. What? I just... I thought I was doing poorly. I thought we were about... <laughs> like, I honestly... What? The thought I had in my head was like... No, that would mean that we did not get exactly the same <laughs> amount of gold. Who would get the odd bar? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> I've been thinking this since last night, but you really are a good thinker, Kirie-san. Perhaps you'll be able to easily solve the riddle that we couldn't. Yeah, Kirie is sharp. Can I just say, uh, in editing episode one, mm. I have become so aggravated by our Kyrie? mispronunciation of the yeah, name. Yeah, I know. I didn't realize how much it was going to bother me. <laughs> this is why we research. Uh, I should have done a better yeah, job. Yeah, you should have done a better job. <laughs> Shut up. She might find a more interesting take on it if she comes in without any confusing biases. So it's coming for you, Eva Sam. That's right. Kyrie san would you mind giving us your honest opinion? Giving us you honest opinion. Oh my god. After reading the epitaph. Guys, please. I doubt you'll find it useful. Whoa, look at that, like, eyebrow that raise. Is... Can we... <laughs> That's let's, so uh, strong. Let's have, a, let's have a look at that one. <laughs> oh. Oh, damn. Her boobs are too much. Stop. You all give me... <laughs> you all give me too much credit. You nearly went into Rudolph there. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Just say whatever comes in your head. Let's see your thoughts. The hints you give always help me out when I'm worried. Yeah, the hints that you give to me, Rudolph. What? Oh, so hey, I have been helpful. It's nice to finally hear this about this now. Hear about this now. Oh my god. That was Ben, not the not the game. Oh. oh. We need to redo the scene. Yeah. Cut, quick, come back later. Yeah. Oh shit. Come on, don't I always thank you? You two sure are close. I'm jealous. And the rest would also love to hear these hints of yours. We're just killing time anyway. Kill time. K killing. <laughs> so relax, okay? Yeah, I'd love to hear these hints that Kyrie has for us. I mean, for the adults. Kyrie was so disturbed at being praised so highly for something so strange. But they had all the time in the world. <laughs> yeah, all the time. <laughs> all the time. A whole day and a half, I Ugh. think. Realizing that this was just a way to waste time, she decided to accept the role she'd been given. Okay. Okay. Alright. Uh-huh. I'm sure I'll say something off the mark, but, well... I'll put forward my ideas. Kyrie's, I'm, I'm feeling Kyrie right now. Putting yeah. forward my ideas completely off the mark. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Indeed. Oh. What did you mean in the beginning about how it could be divided into three parts, roughly speaking? Oh shit. Whoa. Now, this is a scene that I was not expecting when I first read this. I... We're gonna literally go through the epitaph and like- You know the thing that really concerns me? The red? It's in red. <laughs> It's fine. Uh, I mean, it's just it's a it sacrifices. Don't I, it's supposed to be I red. felt that image appear. Yeah, that's it's so hurt. good. This entire scene is gonna be real good for like. Oh my god! Looking at this epitaph. Anyway, <clears throat> well, I just mean it's what I said. In red. Oh my it's god! It's so good. 
It's almost like some kind of red truth we may have seen. <laughs> I think that overall the epitaph can be divided into three sections. First, there are the five lines up until there sleeps the key to the gold. Up until this point is the first part, which directs you to the location of the key. <laughs> that sound. And I was kind of <laughs> expecting a visual cue to yeah, go along yeah, with yeah, that yeah. sound, but it never came. Some chessboard flipping or something. Yeah. And then there's the part formed by the 11 lines up until the 10th twilight, which refer to the gold, the location of the golden land itself. Oh, there is a visual Oh, it is. Clue. It is highlighting on the, on the it's right It's just because there. there's more shading at uh, the top. And the remaining six lines, which we'll highlight in a second, make up the part after the golden land has been reached. Oh my god! Yeah, th what is that? You can like hardly see the top one! By right-clicking system tips, the portrait epitaph, you can check the text of the epitaph at any time! That's the first time we've had one now, of those like in the middle of the game. This is gonna be one of those things where if you would like to look at the epitaph and try and figure something out- Wait, is out, it actually split into three parts in system? Uh, not explicitly I don't think. One, two, but three! well enough. Yeah, there you go. And I'm pretty sure that's been the same. Yeah. The whole time. Yeah. So there you go. Um, so yeah, we're gonna so go- So basic, basically this scene is, you dummies, I did it on purpose. Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, I love that. Yeah. So just for your sake and for Rita's sake. Yeah. This is a good time to talk about the epitaph. Sure. Um, Cause they're basically gonna run through and be like, this is what we think about it. This is how we think we might solve it. Um, so yeah, we might try and tackle it with them if we can. And by we, I mean you. Sure. <laughs> yeah, cause I remember you've mentioned several times that like, Part three is very different because people found found part two too complicated. Too complicated. They couldn't understand it. So like, I'm kind of taking part th ep like episode three as a lot of free hints. Yes. Which yes. is probably honestly a little bad because I might slip up in some cases. Yeah. yeah. But nonetheless, that's kind of yeah. my perspective. This is, this is going to help a lot with the solving of the epitaph, assuming it can be done. Of um, course. <laughs> assuming. I see. It can be divided into three parts about the key, the golden land, and the golden land's treasure. Even we have been able to grasp that much. See, that that's the you dummies. That's it. the you dummies line. He crosses everyone who's like on top of things. Right? Yeah. <laughs> the three sections that refer to the key, the door, and the treasure. Nissan, don't butt in any more than you have to. Let Kyrie san speak her ideas freely. Kyrie, please continue. We see it the same way you do so far, so, Van. I wonder about the meaning of that thing in the beginning, the. Beloved hometown. Normally that would refer to where Grandfather lived, right? Since Father went to all the trouble of telling us that it's beloved, we can imagine that it's a hometown he had strong feelings for. Did Father come from Odawara? Odawara's definitely where he was born, but I don't think that's the hometown he loved. I imagine all of our siblings have the same place in mind. Right. This probably isn't Odawara. From what I've heard, he had a very fun time as a youth. I feel like this is Kraus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Being made the Ashiramiya family head was probably Dad's greatest bit of misfortune in life. Probably. Father didn't actually want to become the head. So where is this place? Is there a river there where sweep we swim? Maybe there was at the time. There's been a lot of development there since then, and the sweet fish might have disappeared. It'd be extremely difficult to investigate whether the sweet fish were there during Grandfather's boyhood years. I... I'm glad they haven't told us where it is yet. Yeah. I'm really concerned they're going to miss it. We'll get to it. It probably isn't just a single river. I believe we all gave this a thorough investigation geographically. You even went to the actual place to investigate directly, right, Ava? It was only as a vacation, <laughs> but the townscape had changed completely since Father's time. After all, it was caught up in that war, wasn't it? By now, even precisely locating Father's... The place Father lived is impossible. I imagine that if Father went there himself now... Even he wouldn't be able to pick out the place he'd lived anymore. Well, after all, those guys have also gone through a remarkable recovery. Does the part about a Sweetfish River bring any place name clearly to mind? Well, yeah. After all, they're Sweetfish, right? People say they live in rivers with clean water. There are countless rivers at my work. And a stream dad innocently went Sweetfish fishing. In was probably buried by the development later. It'd be different if we had a map from before the war, a person who knew a lot about the era was before the war, but... It probably isn't something like that. What do you mean? Behold the Sweetfish River running through my beloved hometown. You who seek the Golden Land follow its path downstream in search of the key. After these two lines, there's a single blank line. 
something is being presented with just these two lines. What if the next three lines continue based upon that something? What do you mean something is being presented? I don't know. At any rate, what we can get from these two lines alone isn't something vague, like the question of which river it might be, but the clear presentation of the key word, river. It may be that this isn't a river with water flowing down it. The Sweetfish River might be some kind of metaphor. What sort of impressions does the word Sweetfish give? Sweetfish are like salmon. They're freshwater fish, but they come out in the ocean right after they're born. Uh, when they get big, they go back to the river to live there. And then they spawn there and end their lives there. Well, they leave their home at one point, but when they get big, they come back and lay eggs. Ah, might be able to link that to the idea of clan prosperity. Oh. They're freshwater fish, but they can live in the ocean? I didn't know that. I figured river fish wouldn't be able to live in the sea. And they're called sweet fish because they have a pleasant aroma. I have never eaten one, but I have heard they can be quite delicious when brewed with salt. It's so irrelevant. Was that nothing? Are you son? sure, Ben? <laughs> what if salt is the key? What if it is? Oh shit! What's I, that? I meant key to the riddle, not like the actual key, just so we're clear. <laughs> but either interpretation is okay. <laughs> no confirming or denying here. <laughs> What's that, Nazi son? You never eaten salt grilled sweet fish? They're delicious. <laughs> you should try it sometime soon. God damn it! It is a food for commoners. Oh! oh! Hardly appropriate for your mouth. Oh. Damn. Oh my god. That was a fucking dig at Hideyoshi. Please, calm it down. This is just my wild idea, but the impression I get from a Sweetfish River makes me suspect a family tree. The Sweetfish go out into the ocean for a time, but they return to the river where they were born to spawn, right? It reminds me of myself. You're right. By this point, I can confess that I've sometimes suspected that it refers to you and Maria-chan. Here we go. What? Here we go. What? Theories. Okay, like, I was on board with three parts, because, like, it wasn't <laughs> something I'd really considered explicitly for trying to solve it, but it was kind of apparent-ish. Uh-huh. The, the thing about Sweetfish being a metaphor for something else, on board with. This is a little too specific for where I've been so? thinking. Alright. What have you been thinking? The... Okay. <laughs> honestly, do you want to tell me what you think before they honestly, start to honestly, pull your thoughts? <laughs> kind of not much. Okay. Because I just don't know the context. So what's fun? What's fun about this is that we've been so mad at these characters for not trying to solve the epitaph, and then I'm like, so how do you feel about the epitaph? Because and you're the, like, I don't know. Is I've been like, trying, <laughs> I've been trying to poke at it, but for all of my ideas, I don't know the context of. It. Have you not been reading Beatrice's letters? I this have. is the entire thing that she wants you to do, right? Please go into the letters. Well, no, but it's us. like I've been poking at things and I've been like, okay, well, this is a geographic <laughs> thing, well, this is a metaphor, sweet fish is probably, you know, something to do uh -huh. with like. Something. Oh, crap. What was my original <laughs> idea? Uh, what was I don't know. I don't recall. It was. Um, I'm staring into your soul. I think to... I suggested it was like the paths on the island through the forest or some shit. Sure. Because like, I was kind of sticking with the idea that it was like something on the island because otherwise it kind of wouldn't have made sense for it to happen in the storm but then again that isn't really a part of the epitaph so. Right. But like I was poking at it but I didn't know the context. Okay. But what I'm seeing here is I am a fool. You are a fool. I am a fool. It's true. Like, I yeah, will it's, say it's, if you want to jump not like I, It's not like I haven't been trying. It's more just like I haven't locked anything in because I'm just so lost with it. That's fair. That's okay. Maybe something will jump out at you during this scene. Yeah. Because we're definitely gonna we're gonna get some good some good theory talking. Yeah. Uh crap. I don't even it's remember. One of you. This was. <laughs> I see three characters there, none of those are mine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's fine. <laughs> uh I assume it would be Rosa, right? Yeah. I see if you follow the river downstream you'll find a village. I know it'd be Kraus. <laughs> If you go down the family tree, you'll all you find is Maria's name. Look at that little cross symbol. Look at that little cross symbol. Yeah, oh my mean? god, I swear if it's a key, I'm gonna like slap someone. Well, here we are. We're, we're learning. Yeah. <laughs> Only. I don't even know. I'm just gonna read this. <laughs> Only her name has a that thing. Red Rio Sato. The, the character father uses for village here. So I had to know Japanese to figure that one out. Well, that's what they're saying. 
This is this is true. This puzzle is, is I can even confirm or not it involves learning some Japanese. But uh it's a tough puzzle! I Fucking, mean I'm not surprised. I've I'm had just... like two years to figure this thing out. And nobody has, so like, good luck. Nobody has? Well, I guess I can confirm or deny that anyone has. Right. But they're trying to figure out now, and they say none of they have. So Right. Yeah. Oh, you mean like in the Rakenjima tea party? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean no, I mean in, in the story. I don't mean in like oh, real life people. Right. I was confused then. Yeah. yeah, that was definitely crass. Isn't that right? But as you all know, father doesn't like Maria, and he almost never speaks with her. And in the past, Father told me to give Maria a completely different name. I just decided to go with Maria on my own. Father was very mad about that. Mm. Given that, it's very hard to imagine that he would reference Maria's name in his precious epitaph about who would succeed his wealth and inheritance. You know, it just occurred to me, mm. the one thing that would have made that really obvious without it being Japanese, mm -hmm. is the fact that Beatrice... Or Always uh -huh. went and found Maria at the start of the story before people true. started dying. This is true. That mm. just kind of clicked for me there. Something to consider. The epitaph was put up two years ago. Maria's nine years old, so it does line up in that sense. Yeah. Of course, I would question why Kinzo seemed mad about about Maria being named that nine years ago before he put the epitaph up, uh, presumably, which is interesting. Wanted her name to be Key. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, why village? It's gonna be key. I don't know, maybe Village has some, uh... Some importance. Anyway. Have you ever let Maria-chan read the epitaph? Uh, yes, of course. But it looked as though she didn't have a clue. She didn't have a clue and she kept going on about that same occult stuff about how it was a resurrection ceremony for the witch. The connection between Father and Maria. Certainly they do share that occult hobby, but they never interacted. I can't imagine it refers to Maria either. Uh, I'm assuming it's- I would say it's Kyrie. Yeah. What sticks out to me is how he went out of his way to add beloved to that first line. Like you all said just now, the father was reluctant about becoming the Oshomia family head. Would he have fond memories for anything connected to that? I don't think this can be Odawara, which represents the Oshomia head family. I believe this word beloved here at the beginning must refer to a place full of very important memories to father. Hmm. Well, that's fine. It would be hard to pinpoint since we don't have even a trace of a map from that time, but at any rate, there will probably be there were probably several rivers with sweet fish swimming in them near Dad's hometown during his youth. That's if we're looking for a river with water flowing down it, right? And then go on Kyrie san. I don't really understand the three lines starting with if you follow the river downstream you will find a village. It's probably linked to the two lines about the Sweetfish River. I imagine it's something we'd understand automatically if we knew what the Sweetfish River really was. Until we figure that out, it's probably useless to try and solve these three lines any further. So we're stuck unless we know what the Sweetfish River really is, and there's no guarantee it even means a literal river. Seriously, what's up with the Sweetfish? Did Dad like to eat them? Or does it have to some sp I just thought of something. A mackerel Sweetfish? Anyway, or does it have to some special meaning? I don't think so, because they explicitly <laughs> mentioned several times it was a sour taste. Did they? Damn it. <laughs> Secret is mackerel. In fact, I did suggest that one time <laughs> far earlier in the story. I think I denied it. I think I was like, no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's stupid. Is it pointless to read too deeply into it? If you don't have both a micro and a macro perspective, your field of vision grows narrow. Damn. It might be better to be flexible and avoid thinking too deeply. Focusing on an abstract image of a river where fish swim, or something that can flow up or down. And the answer behind Sweetfish River passes through the next three lines and makes its way to the key to the Golden Land. If you think about it this way, I wonder if it was a mistake to split it into three parts. There's actually four parts. Go down the Sweetfish River, and find the key to the Golden Land. Journey to the Golden Land, and the treasure of the Golden Land. Shit. Hmm. Truly intriguing. Well, you've gone this far. Would you mind continuing and telling us your opinion of the most central portion of the epitaph? Up to the point when we reach the Golden Land on the Tenth Twilight. That's the most symbolic and the most disturbing part. Since the word sacrifices keeps coming up, 
I can't help but think it has something to do with Father's occult ceremonies. How do you see it, Kirie-san? Hmm... Kirie recrossed her arms several times, peering into the paper with the epitaph copied onto it, as though she was looking through it. Hmm... This is... very difficult. It starts with, the one who obtains the key. So you probably won't be able to continue without knowing what that key means. I'll have to give up on that, but I'll take a shot at trying to solve it anyway. Just like how the Sweetfish River isn't necessarily a river with water flowing down it, it's also doubtful that this key is actually something shaped like a key. Right. It might also be a code or a keyword. After all, this key isn't something to be stuck into a keyhole, it's something that selects six people to be sacrifices for the first twilight. In that sense, we can say for sure that this key isn't being used to open the door to the god. This, I don't think this is Kyrie. I feel like she wouldn't say that, but I anyway. Mean, but we don't, we don't know, know who else it We was. don't even know. Put the sprites on screen. <laughs> Ruji, please. Uh, but what a disturbing key it is. A key that can choose six human sacrifices. How could a key select anything? Do you spin it like a roulette? Oh! <laughs> oh! Hideyoshi. Hideyoshi. Huge demon. Right in the meta. Huge demon roulette. Alright. This key indicates a certain group of six people. <laughs> no, we should say it indicates a certain group of six things. Oh my goodness, are they about to say that the sacrifices could have been personal sacrifices? I'm shocked! Uh, you think that's what this is? Is that what, is that what you think this is? I think... Okay. Maybe. Okay, we'll see. Yet this doesn't mean a literal command to offer sacrifices. For example, it could be an anagram. What? <laughs> okay. An anagram? Do you mean playing with letters? Yes. I've been thinking about it ever oh, since God, Rosa it's started be in Japanese again, isn't it? talking about the family uh. tree. <laughs> about how village was a part of Mia-chan's name. It seems that ever since the words beloved hometown came up, Rudolf-san, for example, has assumed that its epitaph points to some coordinates or some other geographical feature, but that might not be the case. This could be some kind of puzzle, or maybe playing with letters. Forgive me, but how does one play with letters? <laughs> That's he, please. Oh well, it's like sucker mirror barrels. What do you get when you take out the E's and R's? Like that. <laughs> well, you were raised well in that sand, so you probably didn't know. Mary? Take out the E's and R's, huh? Ah! Stop it. It is an undignified game. Inappropriate <laughs> for you. <laughs> Early Nazi didn't get it and had a blank look on her face. It seems she'd only guessed that the answer had to be something undignified. Going by Rudolph and Ava's sniggers. Uh, uh, Matsui, Nissan, it's something like this. This is just something from Maria's Book of Riddles, okay? There's this thing called a Tanuki notebook. Ooh. Is that... yeah? Yeah, that sounds right. It's a notebook written like a code with lots of tars mixed in. And if you remove all of the tars, then the true paragraph pops up. Mm. It's a game like that. Ah, oh, I see. Um, I, I don't really. Nancy finally realized the answer to the undignified riddle riddle proposed, and her face grew red as she hung her head in embarrassment. I will not be saying what the answer is because it is very immature. Suck my balls. How dare you! God. I wonder how that was represented in Japanese. Did they do a different one for English, maybe? I, ass I assume so. Um, crap. So maybe kill actually means remove in that sense, right? No, that- fuck. Who the hell was saying that first line? Just put the sprites on the screen! Uh, yes, I also thought that it's possible that the key to the golden land is a word with six characters. In other words, the tar from the Tanuki Notebook is actually six characters here. This is getting complicated. Oh my god, characters! Just give us the sprites! On screen! Yeah, play, play with letters, is it? Hmm. In Japan, it really feels like a child's game. But it's apparently a savage form of humor among intellectuals in the English world. I think this is scary, eh? Stylish? <laughs> stylish? Would you call this stylish? Did I, did I say stylistic? I didn't mean to. Yeah. I think this is Kyrie here. I wasn't questioning this... your pronunciation, I was questioning whether it's actually stylish. Uh, I have no idea. I don't- I don't study humor. Uh, <laughs> it's, easy, it's easy to imagine that Father was interested in it. But by this point, I quickly lose my ability to understand it. Up until this part, it may have been filled with mysteries, but it was extremely sequential. 
Sweetfish River, go down it, then find the key, all of that is extremely sequential. Extremely. And as a result, we can guess that we gain a six character key. But in that case, we now don't know what we killed the six characters from. I think you can figure this out. I think that you can follow this line of reasoning if you'd like to take a stab. I... I want to give you a second to think, but I think that if you can... You can follow this line of reasoning and see what she'll say next. Um... I'm not saying this is a test, but I'm I mean, I'm my guess see. was when they first suggested it being, like, a cypherish type thing. Sure. Um... That it was actually going to be, like, six words or something. Sure. The, like, six chosen by the key sacrifices would be, like, you know, get rid of gouge, get rid of knees, get rid of kill... And Take out all the shit. words that are there a bunch of times and just put it together. I mean, then you just end up with, like, yeah, head, like, chest, stomach, really, knee, leg. That doesn't know. really make much sense. There's, there haven't been any, like, statues, I don't think, that have had those body parts that are very significant. There's been a portrait, though. Yeah. Oh my god, I swear, if there's just, like, a room behind the fucking portrait. <laughs> too much. I can either confirm it or deny. Uh, Alright, that's fine, we can continue. If you don't have anything to stab at, but... I will let you know that I, I guess what they were going to say next in this part. So, you're lagging behind, mate. On the uh, epitaph game, at least. I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna cave. I. That's all right. That's all right. Let's keep going. Becomes a hint. That's right. Where do we pull his characters from? He doesn't tell us. On the second look, there's a sprite on the screen. There she is. Oh, look! It. It's not that sprite. Heart and epitaph and text. That's amazing. On the second twilight, there are those who remain, which means that at the very least, that something has a limited number of characters. You could read it like it's telling you to continue with the remaining characters after the first six characters are removed. You with us now? That is... That would have, like, honestly, <laughs> as long as I would have sat here, that would have gone completely over my head. Yeah, Because I was okay. thinking too much about the, like, You were thinking gouge. about the exact words and, like, what you're yeah. supposed to do and, yeah, sure. I was thinking, like, from okay. gouge down. So basically she's, she's gonna try and math out how many how many things we're dealing with and yeah. based on all this gouging that we're doing. Um, and yet, we don't know what this something is, even though it should have been shown to us at the beginning. Are we wrong even in our assumption that this is playing with letters? Hmm. Everyone crossed their arms and fell silent. It felt like they were about to reach a novel understanding they hadn't managed before, but they stumbled just one step short. They needed a hint. Give us a hint, nerds. Oh. Boing. Then, Hideyoshi's stomach rumbled heartily. That sure is the sound that my stomach makes when it rumbles. Boing! That silence was broken by laughter. Ah, oh, lovely. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Strangely enough, by spinning the gears in my head for a change, my stomach's gone completely empty. Looks like I can't stand missing breakfast. <laughs> Natsui, isn't there anything to eat here? There should at least be enough to set aside for breakfast. Or enough set aside for breakfast. I will prepare it. I'm also starving. Ugh, and I'll bet those brats above us are the same. Still, I doubt there's enough for the 18 people here, much less... 18 people here? Much less a full three meals, right? That's right. It'll be a long journey till tomorrow. Maybe we'd better take a trip back to the mansion and fish around for some canned food or something in the kitchen. There's nothing more than crackers and snacks here, but if that will be sufficient, I can get them ready for you all. But with this many people, there might not be any left for lunch. As we'll do for now. Would you mind getting those ready? Hmm. It looked like the men had been taken over with an appetite that stopped all thought. The atmosphere grew more peaceful and the epitaph investigation team, the EIT, split up for the time being. But Ava kept staring at the paper the epitaph was written on like she was going to burn a hole through it. Playing around with letters was nothing more than a theory of mine. There's a chance I was mistaken. Eva-san, don't take it too seriously, okay? That's- that's just like at the audience, like, please <laughs> don't read into this too much. <laughs> uh, thank you, I'll just keep doing this on my own. Would you mind leaving me alone? Ava spoke coldly. Kyrie didn't bother her anymore and instead went to help Natsui prepare breakfast. Hey son, shouldn't we also help prepare breakfast? Then you go help, I'm busy solving this. S sorry but I'll help. Good grief. How can you be like that? Hmm. Huh? 
The Ashirimiya family headship will be given to the person who solves this epitaph. Looks like you've given up from the beginning as if it has nothing to do with you. If you can solve it, there's a chance even you'll be able to receive the headship. This is a chance to steal everything from Nisa. Why aren't you taking such a ch once in a lifetime chance more seriously? Uh, um, uh. Rosa hung her head, unsure as to how she, she should answer. Too late, she regretted carelessly speaking to her sister when she was in a bad mood. You've noticed anything, say so. Even though Kiryu-san and I were thinking hard, you just kept nodding your head, didn't you? Come on. Isn't there anything you've noticed? Damn. Come on. Eva is being mean. Um... Don't, don't you think this part's strange? Strange? What is? It's just that the whole section's written like a journey to the Golden Land, right? You reach the Golden Land and then you receive its treasures. What's your point? You think there's some sort of keyword tied to those treasures? Um, no, not the treasures themselves. Look in the Tenth Twilight. Isn't how you receive the treasures strange? Here we go. What is it? Once and for the last time, okay. Huh? Uh... Why does it say we'll receive the treasures once and for the last time? If we only get them once, then there's no point in telling us it's the last time. And the same thing in reverse. Oh, but I'm probably splitting hairs over- No, this is Rosa, isn't it? Shit! This is Rosa, yeah. But I'm probably splitting hairs over nothing, if you think about it. This is father we're talking about, after all. I probably just said it that way to make it sound more dramatic. Mm. 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 Uh. Uh. Oh, God. I can't help but snicker over here. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, here we go. All right. It's purgatory time! Woo! Ah! My part is here. This Boring! Is, this is a new version of this track. I think it is. Yeah, definitely. The other one is like violins, right? This one's like... I don't know what this is. I think... No, the other one's piano. This one's organ. Ah, yes. This is an organ. Of course it is. A very, a very synthy organ. It's very nice. Boring. <laughs> huh? What is boring? Boring, boring. My, my. What on earth is this child grumbling about? She's probably annoyed by all the tips you gave Butler Sama, madam. Not really. That doesn't annoy me. On the contrary, I'm happy to see that Yuzu's battler finally reached a level where he can match me. Oh, here we go. We're talking about that scene where he kicked her ass. Mm-hmm. Ho 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 ho. battler could and I get a little too close? Perhaps I saw Foggy said best, leave your young'uns alone. Go, 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 go. When Vigilia and Rodave giggled and cackled, Beatrice's irritation meter finally reached its limit. Gah! Enough with everyone laughing at me! Yeah, Run away! Vanish for a while! The tips, man, you guys. <laughs> She's like, get out of here! <laughs> Vanish for a while! Disappear! Disappear! Certainly. Then I shall rest for the time being. There we go. Go, 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 go. Run away bowed his head, still laughing, and vanished. After that, all that remained was the grumpy and irritated figure of Beatrice, and Virgilio, who was coolly enjoying her tea. When you said, there are no more than 18 people on this island. You actually cornered yourself. I knew it. I did have this feeling it might be a bit too early. I suppose that was right after all, wasn't it? She did say there are no more than 18 humans on the island, unless we're giving up on that alternate translation. Uh... Because we did find on the wiki that it said people, but in the... This is true. So are there two separate red truths there? So maybe... No, no, no. There was only one. But mm. maybe the one that I was like... It says humans. Maybe that actually uh, was sure. meant to be people. Maybe one of them was incorrect. I don't know. If you had led him further astray first, things might have been different. But as it was, that Tom Card was a real waste. You ended up harassing him instead. In addition to denying the witch. Butler had possessed a second victory condition, one of explaining everything without suspecting one of the 18. It was at that point, when he'd been tossed her up about by two opposing girls, that his heart should have been at his weakest. However, Beatrice had used her head carelessly. I... This is definitely not her voice, but I am enjoying it. Go for it. <laughs> Proclaiming that there were no more than 18 people, she's giving us a recap. I am giving us a recap. Because of that, 
Butler had been forced to suspect one of the 18, and he had finally begun to build up the resolve he needed to accept that. Butler was stubborn, but that was exactly why fishes would run all through him, like breaking China when he was struck in, struck in a fragile spot. Switching back. That itself should have been his greatest weak point, but... Um, did I get a little too careless after my complete victory last time? Yes. Complete victory? <laughs> yes, you were too careless. The last game was a difficult one for Batlacan. But it seems that this game will become a difficult one for you. Despite the uh, description at the start of the game saying it would be an equal, equal playing field. A broken vase will never return to its original form, so it would be more constructive to think of a next move, rather than regretfully picking up the pieces. However, now that Path has figured out as much as he has, how should I plot against him? Ho ho ho. Your troubled face is an even better snack than one of his cookies. Oh my god, they're like the same person or <laughs> it's something. It's great. It's so good. Ugh. You and Battler, and even Ronove are treating me like sweets now, even though I'm not sweet at all. I'm very rough and coarse. With a shameful childlike face that she would never have shown in front of Battler, Beatrice rolled her head around on top of the table. Teacher! At least give me a hint! Oh? What kind of hint? If you know some really good move that'll leave Battler speechless and make him want to accept me, I won't ask if you to say it outright, so, um, even if it's just a hint. Oh, 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 I cannot. I am on Batlacoon's side right now, so I couldn't teach you something that would give you an advantage. Come on, don't be so stingy. Your disciple's in trouble, right? I seem to recall you brazenly boasting that you had surpassed your teacher when you killed me. Mm. Please act like an old person. Give me just a bit of your crafty ideas. Please. It's mean if you only help Batla. My, my. That was a sharp cut. My, my, you're still a spoiled child. But it's true that I may have given Batlacun a few too many hints. It did serve as a scolding to you. This is another get on it audience scene, yeah, isn't it? this is great. It did serve as a scolding to you, but perhaps it was a little too much support for a fair game. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Please, teacher, at least just a hint now. <laughs> this is only a hint. Think about what it means by yourself, okay? Yeah, yeah! I'll think about it myself, so please! Please give me one that'll leave Battler down the dumps. Down in the dumps, teacher. Considering how she acted like a great and mighty witch in front of Battler, the way she acted when he wasn't around was truly pathetic. Vigilia sighed at how childish Beato still was, despite all the time that had passed. Then just a hint. Do you know of Aesop's fable? In North Wind in the Sun. It Here was mentioned again. earlier in episode one, I believe. Of course. It's a story about how the North Wind and the Sun challenge each other to see who can seal the cloak of a traveler, right? That's right. Violent, impatient methods aren't necessarily the best decisions in all cases. You don't have to tell me that. I've already reflected on the mistakes I made when I was too anxious to achieve victory. Think well about what this means. And furthermore, there's one point that Battler seems to be misunderstanding a bit, but he isn't the only one. Do you understand the victory conditions of this game? Here we go, this is what I've been waiting for. What else is there other than making Battler surrender? Uh. No, no, this is, this is good, you'll like this. See? You're already wrong there. How am I wrong? Your victory isn't making Battler can surrender. Isn't it making Battler can accept your existence? What's this? You want me to butter him up, begging him to accept me as a witch? How foolish! I haven't sunk that low. Grr. Beato growled like a dog in a bad mood. Vigilia shrugged her shoulders, snickering at her disciple, who was as short-tempered as ever. That is my hint. For the rest, you'll have to consider deeply on your own. In any event, your moves up until now will not work on Botlakun. Botlakun. A significant tactical adjustment will probably be required. I don't need you to tell me that! I don't have a clue what you mean by the North Wind and the Sun! But at any rate, I realize I'll have to alter my course. I'll introduce a scheme clever enough to surprise even you, teacher! Oh, 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 oh. I look forward to it. I wonder how about the Kumbo Teko bet. I wish you good luck as well. Not a battle, you mean. Hmm. But... 
I mean, yeah, but like, I don't... It's a good hint. Here's the thing, is <laughs> right... Oh shit. Before I read yeah, this... Yeah, tell me, what are you thinking? I mean... It was kind of one of those things where it's like, she said it and I was like, oh yeah, I kind of had been thinking that, but it hadn't really like solidified as an idea. Yeah. Like, it was... It, it lines up with some of what you've been saying. I hope you're picking up on this. Yeah, but it's yeah. like the whole thing where at the end, where like at the end of last chapter, Beatrice is like in power and she's able to do all this bullshit and... But then Battler's still able to retort somehow, even though mm. she's supposedly won. Mm -hmm. It's because she made Battler give up, not yeah. actually she made him it give to up. be a thing. Yeah, I mean, what was Vigilio's exact phrase though? Do you want to go back and have a look? Or do you Except remember? versus surrender was the two she used. Go back a little bit. Sure. Uh... Going, keep going. One more. Uh... There it is. Your victory is it making Batlequin surrender. Isn't it making Batlequin accept your existence? Yeah, it's not making him give up. It's making him be like, Yeah, witches are real, guys! Mm -hmm. Definitely. I know. It might be worth thinking about that as a... Uh, that's what Beatrice's goal is. Oh my god, no, I just had an idea. <laughs> what have you thought of? Please tell me. I hope it's good. I hope it's what good. What if Vigilia is actually a creation of Beatrice? Okay. And... Okay. Her plan is... to butter Butler up with this other witch. Okay. So that he's like, witches are cool, guys! Okay, I oh didn't my even god. think Corona is such a thing, but <laughs> that sounds like a crazy theory. Oh. Thing. <laughs> Let's have to see what happens. But yeah, that's a hint worth considering. Because she appeared on... Beatrice successes game board before she appeared in Purgatory. Okay. I'm suspicious. Now. Okay. Okay. That I'm sounds... suspicious. Okay. Now. You can be you can be suspicious. Oh. Of her. She is our guide, so having a guide who's who's playing for the other team is probably not good. Are you going to give up and resign already? I guess you are that tired. Why don't you just grab a futon and sleep? As my mind grew vague, I pretended to fight my drowsiness while sinking deeper and deeper into the sofa. I scolded myself. You also dreamed about stealing the pro- <laughs> This is your new voice? <laughs> family head from Kraus, right? Even though my magic's given you a chance, are you already throwing it away? You could say that, but this riddle is really hard. You know why a puzzle would be better. At least in that case, you know for sure it's solvable. Mm -hmm. But in the case of this epitaph riddle, we've been given no reason to be sure of that. I might just be fighting a useless battle. It might be unsolvable. Oh. Or insult. Oh, no. I don't know. Still hazy, I looked at the notebook I'd been holding the whole time. It was open to a page with the epitaph, which I must have stared at hard enough to burn holes in it so many hundreds of nights I'd lost count. That page is truly a door. On the other side lies the Golden Land, the place I've wanted to drag myself to, no matter the effort ever since I was a child, and the place I was never able to reach. Am I touching the door with both hands? With the book? No, the door right in front of me, ready to be opened, and yet st still unable to reach the other side. That's right. Your hand is already on the door. Come on, open it with all your strength, and read the characters written on the door. Open it with all my strength. Read the characters written on the door. <laughs> I'm liking the voice. What are you thinking? Have you just thought of something? I can't tell if you're trying to work yourself up into a, into a uh, frenzy or if you're... I'm... <laughs> I'm like, this line has to mean something. The character's on the door. Like, oh. <laughs> I'm enjoying watching you struggle. Look, I think that you can you can solve a lot more of the appetite for just what we've been told by this point. Yeah. Um, and we're definitely watching Ava try and figure it out. Which, uh. is, which is super fun. Loving the new voice, by the way. I'm pretty sure you weren't quite that high pitched last well, time. Well, yeah, I mean, last time, this was like the intention, but I couldn't actually go that high because my voice was shot from being sick. That's okay. I feel you. I've been, I have been doing some solid exercises over the last few days. That's good. It's good to hear. Strain your eyes, see through it to the thing beyond the epitaph written in the notebook. I really, I'm just, you know the throwaway thing that I said where I was like, what if there's <laughs> something behind the portrait? <laughs> what if that's what it means? What if the portrait is a door? Oh! <laughs> we have to like poke in her knee and her leg and, and her chest. And then which portrait is it? Because there's two of them. Oh shit. 
They're like, oh no, we opened the one in Kinto, sorry, in the main room and it didn't work. And then they get a Kinto study and it works in there. So I'm pretty sure that portrait faces the outside, so. Hold on. <laughs> if there is a secret thing behind one of the portraits. Uh huh. It gives pretense for them perhaps to be another behind the other. Sure. Which would mean that there might actually be a hidden room in Kinzo's study uh -huh. if we go back to those closed rooms. Is this true? There could be a hidden room. Oh my One god. One permitted in the mystery, that could be it. Oh. I don't know. Uh, I, I think this is young Ava. <laughs> the beloved hometown won't, be, won't betray our expectations. The only past father held dear happened during his childhood years. That's right. And what about the Sweetfish River? Several rivers where they swim, and there's reason to doubt that this just refers to one close to the place Father lived. We take out a map and start calculating which rivers with Sweetfish were closest. Things will quickly get vague and we won't be able to narrow it down. Didn't you say it yourself? You said it didn't have to be a river with water flowing down it. If the word Sweetfish is too complicated, why not forget it? <laughs> Think of a river. A river. Linking with a family tree wasn't a bad idea. Try thinking about how to link a river with something else along those lines. Felix, I hope you're doing this. I hope you're trying to think about how to link a river with something else. Link a river with something, something else. Something that flows. What flows? Honey. Okay, good answer. <laughs> good answer. We're looking for a river of honey. Because it's we sweet, find right? That, oh, shit. The sweet fish is the honey. That's and then right. the golden land is a giant beehive. Exactly. It's perfect. I like this voice. I should definitely give it a character. Yeah, I should voice. give it a character. It's going to kill me, though. It hurt my throat. Can this be Ronave? No. No. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 young man. I'll make you some cookies and tea. It isn't a river. <laughs> Where else could sweetfish swim? I'm going drink some tea. Oh, but if we... Talking about places sweetfish can swim, then. Maybe the ocean has something to do with this. My husband even said that they go out uh. into the ocean, even though they're river fish. Hmm. Hmm. To be the ocean. Oh, no, but... No, to the ocean. This is a tight track. Wait for this shit I was to really, build. I was really oh. confused by the drum beat there. I Wait thought it, it was like going... <laughs> Actually, so you know, I when I said I thought it was going, <laughs> that's where I thought it yeah, was going. There it is. This song is such a tease, no, I love but, it. Huh? Oh. Did you notice? But that's just a faint memory. There's supposed to be a room for storing books in this building, right? If you investigate, you can make sure. That's the Sweetfish River. And if the key might be a six-character word, could the key actually be resting in that river? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I have to start. I have to search in an atlas. Even if I know that, I don't know from what I should take the six characters. You really don't know. Think deeply. They're pretty smart, so our ideas are solid. Don't think of it like it's something as massive as the riddle of the epitaph. It's like a child's riddle. Men are always children no matter how old they get. Even if father has advanced into old age, <laughs> it doesn't change the fact he's essentially a child at heart. Throw away your awe of father. Think of this like it's a worthless, infantile game with riddles. Like one Maria suddenly brought her out on a boat. Riddles. Worthless, infantile... Hmm. Huh. I'm sure that was... What was it? Mm. I'm sure if my memory isn't wrong that it's probably the case. I don't have to rely on my vague memory. I should be able to figure out that immediately by searching the library. Look at all these clues we're getting. You probably already noticed the answer. All that's left is to investigate whether it's correct or not. Come on, Ava. Let's go to the library, making sure no one sees us. There yeah, we should find a mountain of thick books that didn't fit in Father's study. I'm sure we'll find a book that answers our question. Quickly. This is the first and last chance we'll ever get to make our dreams come true. The first and the last? Oh my god. Uh, okay. Oh, fucking phrase. When Nutsy tried to lay a blanket over her, Ava suddenly jumped up. I I'm sorry. It looks like I woke you. Ava, if you're sleepy, don't overdo it. You rest first. Uh, thank you. I'm just going to the bathroom for a bit to wash my face. No, you're not. Uh, you should take it easy and rest. It's gonna make yourself feel worse, you know? I told you I'm fine. I'll be right back. After leaving any of those words behind. Oh, I rapidly shit. left the lobby. Oh shit, Ava's narrating now. The lobby was partitioned off by a door, so as soon as I went into the corridor, they could no longer see me. The library was next to the servant room. Suspicious. Father always owned a vast 
book collection. Ever since he started to become engrossed with his occult hobby, that collection grew even larger, so that the normal books suitable for a normal study had been forced out as his study overflowed. The so-called library was mostly used as storage room for those normal books. They're all thick, like complete encyclopedias for intellectuals, but that was very convenient for me now that I was investigating something. I ended softly and, and just in case, mm -hmm. I checked the room with my gun, Reading, making sure that there were no suspicious people there. And I locked it from the inside. Oh god. Oh god. So make your lock room. I'm sure this is fine. I actually wasn't thinking that the murderer might be hiding somewhere. What scared me was the thought of one of my siblings might hear what I was investigating. My heart had started racing before I realized it. I was half asleep just a moment ago, so I didn't realize how significant this thing I noticed was. As I gradually became aware, my heart started to feel like it was about to explode. I wonder if any of the other siblings have noticed this. I don't think Kraus and Rudolph will notice, but I don't know about Kyrie. She's extraordinarily good intuition. I don't know about Rosa either. Rosa's stupid too. I think that was young Eva. Yeah, that was young Eva. She's always been incredibly so. Really? I'd say she was wise enough to make you think she was stupid, so she didn't own herself unnecessary malice. Here it is. I wonder if we'll find it in this one. I pulled the book out and flipped through the pages. Hmm. So this is... the Sweetfish River? Let me see. This is what the Sweetfish River means. Don't dawdle around. Oh my god, the Witch of yeah. Certainty is helping her! She found you to straight away! I have no comment. Ah! Straight away is a stretch. What did she say? Oh, I, sh I don't remember what she said. Shit. Uh, I, I will say, I, I'm sure she's mentioned that she helps people who help themselves. That is the thing that she does. Anyone works hard, Juan Dels is there to save the day. So... This? Which is confirmed? This motherfucker. Lambda's <laughs> getting in on it. He's having a great time. This is what Sweetfish River means. Don't dawdle around, research further. Uh, yes, I understand. If you follow the river downstream, you'll find a village. By using the character... Village, does he mean a town or something? It's just an area of dense population, so there could be any number of those. Why have you stopped thinking? Was this too much work for me? If only you just give up. Why don't you just hand the Ashirmia family headship over to Kyrie? I don't want to. I will become the head. This is my first and last chance. What is this village? What does it mean? Do you find one and go down to the river? Uh, in the village, look for the shore the two will tell you of. That means sure. Don't worry about it. Have don't. we seen it anywhere? Uh, I mean, I don't think so, but I don't, I don't recall. Maybe they'll go through it. Get it? Uh, I, I understand. Sure, sure, right before my eyes. Uh, no, right before my eyes. Pieces that I haven't been able to... I don't know who's narrating now. This will be regular Ava. Oh all my began God. to snap. Snap into place all by themselves. I couldn't even remember... I couldn't even remember to close my open mouth. My throat grew completely dry. I just noticed that the wind is getting very intense it's in this very closed loud. room. Yeah, something bad's happening, I feel. <laughs> or about to happen. Ooh. My throat grew completely dry. Is it really okay for this to be the answer? Really? Really? What is it? But this isn't six characters at all. I'm absolutely sure this is the answer, but this doesn't reach six characters at all. That was Ooh. a cool. Did you stop thinking again? In that case, think of a way you could reach it with six characters. You can't think of one, then research it. There has to be an answer. You must not doubt that. Is believing in that too much for you? If only you just cry yourself to sleep and then you can just give up and die. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, six characters. I, I found it. This is the, this is the key to the Golden Land. Yes, this is the key to the Golden Land. Part one done. Easy. Ah! That was easy, wasn't it, Felix? Key to you okay? our childhood dreams. You look like you're sweating. But you're a mess. What is it? <laughs> what is it? I don't know. I'm sure we'll find out. I'm sure they'll tell us. The only keyhole this can be stuck in is that place. This has to be what offering the sacrifice means. Oh, shit. What I'm place? Sure you get it by now, right? What place? Oh, please. Oh, my God. Oh. I'm so ready. Ah. Oh. oh. I'm so happy that scene is over. That was too intense. <laughs> it's a big clock. That yeah. was way too intense. Ava's working out the epitome. Oh my god, what is happening? Uh, fuck. What did she see, Ben?
I don't know. I mean, I know. It's a book in a library. <laughs> it's a book. That's all we know. And now there's rain. So I shoot more outside. It's a book in a library, Ben. It's true. What kind of books are in libraries? No. Hold on, let me Google that. No, 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 no. <laughs> ben, it's a book in a library. <laughs> what? Are, we, are you saying we need to go to a library right now? Because I'll do it. <laughs> what kind of book are you thinking of? A book in a library? Is that where you're going with this? No, hold on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> what are you trying to pull? I'm concerned that the six may be something to do with Japanese too much, and that's a problem. Okay. But if it's a book in a library... Okay. What kind of books are in libraries? Hold on. You're, s <laughs> you're jumping the gun. <laughs> There's one book in particular that may or may not have something to do a little bit with this story. Okay. I'm not going to say it. O okay. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. You say it. And here's the thing, <laughs> is if one of them is a key, and there are two other of them in the story... I don't know where you're going what with if this. <laughs> you can't have to spell this out for me, because I, I don't want to say ben. anything that is leading ben. you astray. Are ben. you referring to, to Dante's Inferno at all? Is that what you're referring Dante's... to? Dante's... You're referring to that, because his names not have six letters in it. Definitely. Correct, that's why I'm concerned about the Japanese. The I'm concerned about the Japanese, that's it the problem. It might be like... But I'm concerned about it, but the Japanese is the problem. Okay, but okay. here's the thing, here's the thing, right? Is that it is called the... What is it? It's like the heavenly something? Ah, oh, divine... No, it's divine... Comedy. Is it divine comedy? I think it might be divine, divine comedy. Divine comedy, yeah. Okay. It's the series, right? So there's sure. Inferno. There's Purgatorio. And there is... Crap. Uh, Paradise. Uh, Paradiso. Already so, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so we got with this. We have Inferno is the key. Purgatorio and Paradiso tell you how to get there. Okay. How? I don't know. <laughs> but the fact that she just walked into a library, saw a book, and was like, "Oh, of course." All right. And it was something that caught her eye when she walked in there. Admittedly, aided by the Witch of Certainty. Yeah. But. It tells me that it has to do with yeah, something yeah. that we already know. Sure. Yeah. And beyond that, I don't know any books that have played into the story. We've heard of parables, we've heard of fables, we've heard of, like, the entirety of Norse fucking mythology. Uh-huh. Yep, that was a thing in the, in the big ma magic fight. Mm-hmm. Although, interestingly enough, they didn't name Mjolnir, they did name Gungnir. This is true. And Mjolnir is the key! Except that's too many letters. That's seven. But either way, okay. So what do we what do we do with these letters or these words? What do you think we do with them? I don't know. Ava is saying that we have to go somewhere to input sac or to offer the sacrifices. I don't want to think about this too hard in case it's a massive misleading <laughs> idea. That's okay. But the fact that she just walked into a room and was instantly like, "Oh, that's the thing." Yeah, makes me very. Suspicious of the fact that it is something that we already have, like, precedence for. Sure. Something has been, like, foreshadowed in the story. Yeah. Maybe. There are definitely a lot of references to, to Dante's Inferno and the, you know, the trilogy there. Um, I don't know. I mean, that might be something uh. you can follow. I'm, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm struggling for things to say because I don't want to give you any more hints. Um, I feel like these people are giving you enough hints as damn well is. Yeah, no, this is... Um, this is really interesting right now. I think that you could figure it out. Um, I, I will say it does have... You do require some knowledge of Japanese characters to, to deal with this, but I think that you could do it if you research enough. Um, this fucking wind is too loud. It really is. Next time! <laughs> we'll talk about it next time when there's no wind.